Hello, in this one, Wings of Ignition plus Condensed Fire. So Wings of Ignition is basically a new spell introduced in Season 5. It has either really good single target damage on Source Awakening, or really good map clearing on Verity Awakening. But most of the people do Source Awakening, because single target damage matters most. At the same time, people doing not only Condensed Fire, but Frost Bombs, Illusion Hooks, Thorn Explosions, whatever you can think of. But most of the time, because Wings of Ignition is so good, your triggered spell or triggered skill is not gonna do that much damage. So what people are doing, they are looking for some utility. If you pick up something like Frost Bomb, it's gonna give you a little bit more map clearing. If you pick up Illusion Hook, it's gonna give you a lot of defensives. And I want to show you a build with Illusion Hook because I think that's the most interesting one. So basically this dude is using Soul Prayer for defensive, extract energy of course for fire energies, preserve mana just to fix mana issues, and killing machine just in general as a damage buff. If I had to put this build into a tier list, I would say it's A tier as of now, and maybe later into the season it's gonna become an S tier build, when people figured out how to make it insanely good. I've seen some crazy builds on Asia server, people running a lot of unique items to push damage to insane amount of numbers. But yeah, as of now it's A tier, and they chose the easiest one to show what you can do on it, because most of those uh, interesting builds requires a lot of investment. So on that note, let's go into the build itself. For early skill board, you want to have something like this. So on Wings of Ignition, Quick Cast, additional fire damage, confidence, spell damage increase. On Condensed Fire, additional fire damage, extract energy, area effect, concentrated area damage, which is a normal link. You can buy that from the shop with the boxes. You should get lucky pretty fast. And on both of these, we want fire weakness and spell activation on spell hit as a trigger link. After that, we can use Release Element as our attack enhance, or you can use Vital Strike. But Vital Strike is gonna require Dexterity, and I suggest use Release Element should be much easier. With Increase Duration, Time Acceleration, and Enhance Effect. On Defense Enhance, I'm using Pantheon, because this is a Barrier build. If you're not doing Barrier, you can use Bulwark of Protection with Increase Duration and Time Acceleration. Shadow Provocation, you always want that for the arm amplification. So lingering shout on that, hush it shout, buff activation when hit, so you wouldn't need to press yourself. Predator's roar, you can use quick shout or shout of power instead of this. Enhance effect and time acceleration. For movement abilities, I chose shield charge and sprint with his arm. If you're not doing shield, you can use leap attack or pen slash. Shout of Justice, just to remove the CC, together with buff activation upon cow control. Attack seal is Condensed Elements. You can also use Critical Chance, but I like Condensed Elements more early, just Elemental Damage Multiplier. And again, if you're doing Barrier, you can use Cold Armor, which is a Barrier Multiplier, which is really good. And for Defense, seal you can do Elemental Domain, Physical Domain, Chaos Resist, Elemental Resist, whatever you need the most. For Zodiacs, we are looking at Cliff, Swamp, Natural Ignition gives us Burn Rate, burn rate remember that, Gold, you can go for Gold Hunter, if you have a lot of Barrier and HP doesn't mean anything to you, this is going to be a really good offensive node for Projectile Damage Amp. After that, Twisted Elements for Status Effect Rate, not a bad choice. Elaborate Attack is basically on any critical build. Refraction for cast speed, and I also picked up barrier on every spell hit, increases a little bit of barrier region. After that, I went for sweep for strike damage amplification. Weapon range doesn't do much, but 6% strike damage jam for 5 points is not a bad idea. I'm using shield, so of course I went for 3. For fence, mysterious shield, song of the good harvest, this is a really nice 8 points, you get damage dampenings and you get damage amplification. After that, Dust for Thirst of Elements, Scent for Heart Spice and Reverberating Aroma. 
I picked up Cold Gaze for damage jump against frozen enemies with the freeze rate because I have cold rate in my plague so I do cold damage equal on every hit so I can freeze enemies at the same time I have display of lightning to apply shock which is a nice damage increase and I'm going strong will you don't have to do it I really like it on hardcore It basically decreases our critical damage taken and amplifies but amp amplifies damage taken by a little bit after that, for the spec, I'm going Brilliance. I went for Convert Mana, but if you if you don't need Convert Mana, instead you can do Near Light Speed. It's gonna be Cast Speed Amplification. Vacuum, I went for Dimension. For Elemental Damage Amplification, Realization is for Barrier, basically. And then if you need two Cosmos Nodes, you can go for Block Freeze. But I'm not using any Zodiac Stones, so I just picked up Sharpness. And Waterfall, again, if you need two Cosmos Nodes and you don't care about Elemental Reflect Damage, you don't have to pick up this. Instead, just pick up Cast Speed Amp and, of course, Elemental Damage Amplification. For Relics, we want to start with Alyssa. Pick up, uh, for the passive, we want uh, Enhanced Fire Energy. For Active, we want to pick up Hellfire with cooldown recovery speed and increased buff effect. After that, you can pick up Sabda for Chaos Resist. You can do Castor or you can do Capri for more fire penetration as a passive. This one. And the last one, you can go for Boreal, which is a little bit of HP, but we are on a barrier build, it's not gonna do much. So if you choose to do Alyssa, Sebda, Capri, you can pick up Castor for level 15 for a little bit of Sanctum effect. For Charms and Blessing, we are looking for Capri level caster. You can do 230 Capri, 190 level, and 230 caster. At the same time, if you are doing barrier and you are Giga Brain, you can pick up a little bit of Alyssa for the barrier amplification, but that means you will have to lose caster. For the charms themselves, we are looking for trade crit damage. Third affix can be anything, whatever you can find. For Leggy, for leggy prefixes, we are looking for maximization chance, crit damage, and strength damage amplification. For optimization, I'm gonna keep it simple. Basically, because we are doing critical build, we want to find a base with the highest critical rate. This is actually a low critical base of 7. High critical base would be 11. I have it on 7 because uh, at the same time I'm using caster refraction, which gives me 14 critical rate base. So it kind of helps me with the critical rate. If you don't have it, just look for high critical base. For efficacy themselves, we are looking for weapon attack flat, weapon speed, fire damage flat, weapon attack multiplier, gear critical rate multiplier, and critical damage multiplier. Basically, critical rate multiplier is the main one we want to focus on. After that, just try to get what you can. If you have authority one, you can actually Manage your speed, not pick up speed, and just pick up elemental damage amplification, which would be really nice. For equipment, because we have barrier build, we always want to get barrier, barrier flat and barrier multiplier. This is what matters the most, especially early, when you are struggling with to get a decent amount of barrier. After that, this is an authority chest, so enhanced kill room duration is really nice. On the suffix, it's always defensive choices. For my chest, I didn't manage to roll barrier or flat, but I rolled physical damage taken decrease, which is also really nice. Then some resistances. For the boots, movement speed is most important, then gear barrier multiplier. As I said, you want to have as much barrier. You can start losing your barrier little by little when you already have like 20k or even more. And because this is an authority craft, I have attack and skill rune effect on my suffix and of course fire resistance something a little bit defensive for jewels early focus on barrier you don't have to pick up too much damage this build is kind of good you're gonna have enough damage but barrier is gonna be really hard to do early so jewels for barrier multiplier is really a good choice for gloves i actually have double authority but not correct one what you would want on gloves is actually cast speed after that you would want uh, barrier multiplier if you are in need of it and then of course 
I picked up Cold Damage, I didn't get lucky, but what you want is actually Fire Damage on a Prefix Authority. And on the Suffix Authority, you want Cast Speed. After that, you want uh, Spell Crit Rate and Crit Damage. This would be a really good Offensive Gloves. For Shoulders, I went for Totem Perfect Dodge, but this thing needs to be recrafted into Skill Rune Effect. I can show you that. And of course, Suffix is always defensive one. So basically, on these shoulders, what you are looking for after Totem Perfect Dodge is this skill rune effect. A lot of people doing that. This is a lot. This is a decent damage increase. At the same time, I'm running Caprice, but I don't think if that's really worth, especially after the energy changes. But it really works nice on this build when you are running uh, Extract Energy on Condensed Fire. At the same time, do not forget to pick up a armor shield. You could pick up barrier shield, but the thing is, barrier works like your HP. And if you don't have any armor or any dodge, you're gonna hit, gonna get hit a lot. So running barrier items and then armor shield is gonna help you a lot with survivability. I'm also using Peddler's Potion Belt with resource cores, but you can craft similar one if you're using Vest Persons. If you don't have Caprice, what you can do, you can craft a neck, something like this. You can pick up Fire Flat, then Elemental Damage Multiplier, Skill Cooldown Recovery Speed for the Suffix, and if you are running Capri Authority Neck, you can also pick up damage on every hit, damage jump on every hit, and your neck would be kinda good. After that, you can fill it in with any cold resistance if you need, or stats. On the suffix and on the prefix, you don't have that many choices. HP doesn't do much for us, so I would say hit rate is not a bad choice. For the ring, we are looking for spell critical rate implicit ring. And for that, we want cast speed and a mental damage multiplier. The last one could be hit rate on the prefix, and on the suffix, of course, spell critical rate, critical damage. And uh, the last stat could be any defensive stat, whatever you need, either strength or some of the resistances. On the neck, you don't have to go elemental damage multi, you can also go critical damage. As an implicit, it's not a bad choice. For the, be for the belt, you want to pick up Early, you want Barrier Belt, but late into the, game, into the game, you actually want a Stat Belt. And, as I said, if you are struggling with uh, Resource Cost, you can craft a Vespa Belt. And Vespa Belt has Resource Cost Minus. And that thing should fix your mana really fast. It's a really good one. You want to get a Tier 10. It's either a Tier 8 or Tier 10. And I highly suggest to pick up Tier 10. And we roll the stats until you have minus four. That's gonna solve most of your mana issues. After that, what you get on the belt, not gonna matter that much. But resource cost on the prefix. You can pick up some mana or hit rate, depending on what you need the most. And you can reroll mana into some other stats. And on the suffix, you can go really ham and craft enhanced potion effect. But if you're doing only one authority, you can just pick up really simple stuff, barrier charge cycle recovery speed, which you can recraft in the alchemy table, and then some resistances. If you're using enhanced potions, you can pick up enhanced potion duration. Later into the game, that's what we're looking at. So let's start with the Rings of Ignition, we want Source Awakening, and we want to get 4 projectiles, 3 projectiles is okay, but 4 is the best. For the links, we are using Harmony, Elemental Damage Amplification, Ignition Explosion. Remember that Ignition Explosion only works if you apply Burn. If you don't have a way to apply Burn, you need to awaken it to Origin. That way your Wings of Ignition is going to be able to apply it. Or you can awaken it to Source for more damage jam, but then your Condensed Fire has to apply Burn. Mana Storm, of course, Spell Activation on Spell Hit. On Condensed Fire, we are looking at additional fire damage, but you can use the same elemental damage jump if you don't benefit from flat fire damage. Extract Energy doesn't have to be legendary, can be just normal, but we are looking for fire energies. Strike and concentrated area damage. At the same time, we are using Overflow Energy on both our skills, just because it's really crazy good 
when you're doing a barrier build, it gives a lot of damage up. Then Koldama, Veil of Protection for Projectile Damage Dampening, Seal of Elemental Domain, but you can choose any. Seal of Striking for Strike Damage Amplification, much better later into the game. It doesn't need dampen resource cost because we're working into Verity to give us resource cost dampening basically. On Pantheon, I'm also added buff activation and hit. Really, really nice, you don't have to press it yourself. On the release element, I also added, added decrease duration, but be careful. This rune might decrease your damage if you don't have enough duration on your release element. At the same time, totem activation upon using enhanced skill with weakened totem. If you're doing elemental damage, you can awaken it to source. It's gonna give you a little bit more extra damage. Mm. And after that, everything else is kind of similar. I didn't change anything more, but the more open skill board you have, the more stuff you can add. But this is pretty good late game one. This is everything I wanted to say and to show. GG's are fun in season 5. I hope you are having fun. And this is a really nice build to actually enjoy season 5. GG's are fun and see you in the next one.